fascinating new hire, well, new role that this uh, female is taking. And talk to us about what indeed she's like and, and the steps that they have to take. What, why would NASA be different from other government departments to secure? Right, so in some ways, NASA shares things in common. They have personal information of people. Uh, you know, they have email networks, which all uh, most uh, federal agencies have. But imagine, they have 20 facilities, labs, uh, space flight centers all around the country in the US that they have to take care of. Then they share information with other space agencies like Russia, Japan, the European Space Agency. So there's a lot of data going back and forth. And that doesn't even, that's only what we're talking about on Earth. Then you have all of the information and all of the equipment that they have out in space. So we're really talking about a whole other realm um, that you know, doesn't include all the networks here on Earth. And so you spoke with Jeanette Hannah Ruiz. I apologize if I'm not saying her name quite correctly, but Chief Information Officer for in charge of cybersecurity. What is her key concern over at NASA? Right. So she just started a, a you know not too long ago, and so she's kind of setting the agenda there. So you know she says we need to get control of our network internally first. Um, and so let's say, you know, she said it's a matter of time before someone hacks something in space. So that would be kind of, let's say, her nightmare scenario if, if a hacker was able to actually hack into a satellite or something in space and, you know, take over controls and, you know, do something with that or even take ransom of that data in space and, you know, make the U.S. pay. But really, I think the big concern she said that's realistic right now of, of you know, in terms of a major concern is the data flow and communications between what's in space and what's here uh, on Earth. So you have these communication flows going back and forth. And so hackers could you know, try to get into what's happening here on the ground. They call them ground stations or that flow. So she says we really, she, they're really trying to secure and harden uh, those kinds of streams. I mean, quite fascinating some of the statements she made in your piece. I urge all our viewers to go and read it online. It says, we see ourselves as a very attractive target. It's almost as though she's, she's baiting the hackers, though, there. But and given the current state of geopolitics, Nafisa, what about the relationship with Russia? Because it's actually a close one, isn't it, between NASA and the US and indeed Russian astronauts. Is that in any way going to change? Oh, yes, it's incredibly close. And if anything, publicly, NASA is very open about the work it does with Russia. The U.S. hasn't actually, doesn't have any shuttles anymore. We don't actually launch people, humans, into space from the U.S. We do it with Russia from uh, their Soyuz capsules, or what they're called, uh, from Kazakhstan, and they go up to the International Space Station. So the U.S. is very open about the kind of work it does with Russia, also information sharing. Uh, and the U.S. actually has a bunch of offices in Russia. So it was interesting to hear from the cyber chief of how they have teams based there to monitor U.S. networks, but also send people from here to monitor that as well. So we still have publicly this like great cooperation that we hear about. But at the same yeah. time, you know, we might be hearing about uh, new, new initiatives from NASA. The, the Trump administration has already indicated that it wants a more ambitious space program and has asked NASA to speed up speed up uh, missions to send humans back to Nefisa space. Nefisa 